please understand that those kids may do funky things at school because, like, if you give a kid a bell front tuba, their school, we, my, I had beginners playing on bell fronts because that's all we had. We had a lot, I mean, we had a lot of kids in our program, and all the performing kids got the big tubas, and the little kids had to play on the bell fronts if they wanted a home tuba, if they couldn't carry it home. So you also have to find tuba players that don't live too far away. I actually like kind of scoped that out when I was interviewing kids. I went to that extra. Like I'm not going to give a kid that like single parent, the parent works all the time. If I know that Dylan is never going to be able to take his tuba home, then I'm going to make sure that I have a home tuba for him or I don't put him on tuba. And with those scenarios, you've got to make a compromise with those parents that they come and pick it up on Fridays. That's the most important time that they have it. Because you can make deals with kids where they practice in the band hall. I would have kids in my sectionals, I'd be teaching, and kids would walk up to me with their practice card, and I would just initial it. And they were keeping up with their own time. So really, I ended up being the parent's signature for certain kids. Um, if you don't have home, if, there, if you don't have enough instruments, you have to work something out or your school owned kids are never going to practice. You see? And most kids' horn, uh, home horns are junky. That's what's, that's what's left. They're not going to be on Taj Mahal instruments, except if it's a new school. There's, a, there's some new schools I go to, and the kids are playing like on Con 8Ds at school and at home. They have that many instruments. But that is a, a rare thing. It does happen, though. It just depends on how old your school is and when your fine arts person decides to buy new instruments. Um, quick thing, too, when it comes, this is especially on tuba, when it comes to like emptying spit out of the slides and whatnot, a lot of times what students do is they have it in their seat, they're playing it in their spit, they'll set it down like this, or they'll set it down to reposition themselves. And when they do that, the spit that was in the slide has the potential to go somewhere completely else in the horn. So then they'll pull out their slide and there will be nothing that comes out. That's because the spit has traveled somewhere else in the horn and it's in a new slide. So you always got to be careful with tubas when they're trying to empty their spit valve. They need to keep it in the same position as they were just playing and make sure that they don't twist it or do anything kind of funky with it. And if they do do that, they have to realize that Especially in the slides that are like back here that don't necessarily like pull out. They have to look at it, follow the piping, and determine how they can turn the tuba, which way to get the spit to go to a slide that they can't pull out. And can you sit in the chair for me? And I'm very picky. Like, I make high school kids change this when I meet them for the first time. I don't want any tubas and euphoniums across the laps when they're not playing. Don't like it, and neither do sight reading judges, because that means they're not fingering, because they're going to sit just like how he's doing. No, take your fingers off the valves. That's how high school kids sit. They don't finger. Okay. So my philosophy on this is like woodwinds. For um, instrument maintenance, you never want woodwind instruments laying on laps, because the water, the condensation is getting into the pads and stuff. Um, I like for euphoniums and tubas, can you do a ready position for me in the way that you probably think that I like it? where it is close to the face. And then, for, no, not close, just tilt it to the side a little bit. That's what the ready positions need to be. And then plain position, they just bring it to their face. And these kids that put them up, down, up and down 20 times in rehearsal, no. You should not be waiting on kids to do that. They're not enough time. Like, I'm talking about, like, put it down on the bell. Like, when it, when, uh, Okay, let's hear the flutes and clarinets play those four measures, and you see tubas doing that. No. I mean, I can't. I guess you can if you want to, but I, it is distracting, and it can fall over, and I just simply don't want to wait. This, that does not look professional in a side green room, and remember, you're always doing big picture for when you're being evaluated, and that looks much more engaging, and it looks more professional and alert, and they're more prone to position when they're in that same thing for euphonium. <clears throat> okay. I know you have questions, but I've got to get to a school and we're over time. So.
write it, jot them down on a post-it note, and we'll uh, do this on Monday. Um, I'm trying to think if we still need instruments that we've already used. No, I think we're good. So you want me to bring my